All right, what's one thing that this shirt, this cap, this do-rag, even these pants, what do they all have in common? They're all clothes that schools have banned. Take a look at this scene. Does it seem familiar to you? Your shirt's inappropriate. Cover your shoulders. Take off your cap and no jeans with rips. If you're in high school or middle school, dress codes are probably something that you're really familiar with. Most dress codes require students to dress modestly so they don't distract or interfere with learning. I remember when I was in middle school, we had to wear uniforms, but you weren't allowed to have long hair. And I had braids, so the first day of school, they literally were like, yo, cut your hair, get out. And in recent years, this old school dress code thinking has gotten heat from opponents who say these policies are sexist and racist because they typically target women and people of color by banning things that they might wear, like short skirts, thin tank tops, or dreadlocks and braids. Like this little boy who was banned from school because of his dreads. According to this analysis from Pudding, the average dress code bans 32 items with numbers reaching as high as 97. It's becoming such a problem that students are using social media to expose this. And it's been getting a lot of media attention. Like this viral video from a Texas school that was meant to teach students the dress code, but missed the mark. So the big question is, how should schools decide on dress codes? This is where our friends from Etiwanda High School in Southern California come in. So what's up to Samantha, Sesha, David, and Jinwei? These students are part of a national youth journalism program called PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs. They researched, wrote, and helped produce this episode of Above the Noise. We asked students from other schools around the nation about how they feel about their dress codes. I think that the dress code is extremely biased and it favors the guys, obviously, because they can get away with more. If a girl is getting pulled out of class or a boy is getting pulled out of class so that they can go home or like fix their clothes, it disrupts their education. Personally, I'm not in support of dress code because I don't like the fact that they take away your expressions with how you present yourself. Some students are so upset by their dress code policies, they're taking matters into their own hands and trying to get their dress code changed like the students from Lincoln Middle School in Alameda, California. They worked with their teacher to demand change to the school's dress code policy back in 2016. I think that they're the perfect issue to get students involved in because it's something so critical, just almost like homework policy, to hear students' voices in. So the more student input on dress codes, I think the better. I was wearing just ripped jeans that maybe had two holes on them, both on the knees, nowhere higher than that, and just a plain, like, high collared shirt like this. I was getting pulled out of class, and I think that's just not necessary, and it was disrupting my day at school and made me feel really bad about myself. Boys and girls were wearing ripped jeans, and girls were way more targeted and stopped by teachers. I was um, involved in school leadership and we were listening to students and when this came up repeatedly we knew that there was a problem. I ended up writing a couple speeches to present to faculty here and to the school board. We really wanted to try to create an atmosphere that was more welcoming where kids felt like they could be themselves and so when we told the district that they really started to listen. It ended up being myself as a teacher and four middle school students from Lincoln Middle School where I teach who got to sit down with administrators from all over our school district to come together and discuss how are we going to make these necessary changes. Our goal is for students to be in class and being able to focus on learning, not so much focused on what they look like or what other people are thinking they look like or are they going to get in trouble for what they're wearing. Okay, so we've heard loud and clear from many students that they think their school's dress code is just too strict. But believe it or not, some students do think a more strict dress code helps students focus on learning. Dress code is very important to have at a school because the students represent the school, the students and staff, and the students should represent the school appropriately and they shouldn't really take, take school as a, let me show off my my body. It's kind of important to a certain extent because there are a lot of people who walk around with like pajama pants and I feel like that's too casual. I think there's a fine line between being casual and being really dressed up though. And many schools and administrators see strict dress codes as a way to instill discipline and prepare students for the professional world. Lots of jobs require employees to dress according to a set of professional standards. Like you don't see many crop tops and jorts in a typical office. And there are lots of jobs that even require uniforms. 
So the argument goes, by having a dress code in schools, students are more disciplined and better prepared for life in the workforce. We talked to Azandi Akins, Assistant Principal of Discipline at Awanda High School. He thinks the dress code minimizes distractions and prepares students for college and career readiness. I think dress code benefits the student body in general in uh, a number of different ways. Um, one, it just helps set kind of guidelines or just helps students understand um, some of the things that they should and should not be wearing. It also provides uh, a safe learning environment. And when I say that, uh, really I'm focusing on things that uh, are more offensive in safety. For example, uh, wearing a ring that's very you know heavy or that you can injure someone. Things like that, I think there will always be some type of dress code in place. Student voice is very powerful. Um, I like hearing from the students, especially on this, um, this topic, making adjustments as things change and time changes. I think that's something that um, definitely that districts and schools will look at. So Jinwei, for you, like, what do you think are the big takeaways from this? It seems the conversation about dress code is never going to end, but I think schools should really be listening to the youth and their opinions on dress code because we're impacted the most by this system. Right, Miles? Right. It's a tricky situation. How do you balance school rules with student rights? We understand that rules are necessary, but that doesn't mean that they have to be sexist and racist. So now we want to hear from you. Consider your personal experiences with dress codes. What do you think is the best way for a school to decide on dress code? Let us know in the comments below. Special thanks to Etowanda High School ENN journalist Jinwei, Sesha, David, and Samantha for providing ideas and helping us on the creation of this video. And thanks to our partners at PBS SoCal. And if you like this video, check out this one from students from Northview High School. And stay tuned for more episodes like this one coming up. And for all you teachers out there, your students can join the discussion on KQED Learn. And as always, I'm your host, Miles Bess. Remember, stay above the noise. Like, subscribe, you know the routine at this point. Till next time. Bye. See you later. Peace out.